I've been writing Hyperland for over three years now and tried all sorts of file managers from Thunar to Nautilus to Nemo to Dolphin, pretty much all of them. I've thus figured out which the best one for Hyperland is and why it has a fatal flaw despite being the best. Now, ready? And da da da, drum roll please. Do 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 do. It's Nautilus. That's right, this is the file manager that I consider the best for Hyperland. However, as I just mentioned previously, it has one fatal flaw. Now, just by looking at it from here, you're not going to be able to tell that it has a flaw, let alone it being very fatal. But trust me, if you are a theming connoisseur and you quite enjoy changing your theme when it comes to your setup, if you just enjoy messing around with colors and making theme switchers like this one, right? There's going to be one thing that really bugs you a lot about Thunar, even though it looks so clean and slick as I just showed you earlier. Right, if you really like making setups like these, then, however, the Thunar file manager will only get in the way, but not as much as you might think. So, want me to tell you what that fatal flaw actually is? Well, here's what it is. Despite being the best, okay, I consider Thunar to be the best file manager for Hyperline, just because, purely because of how stunning it looks, okay, it's written in GTK4 updated from GTK3, which means that you have all the other bells and whistles that usually come with a GTK4 app, that being GPU accelerated rendering and a bunch more stuff, right? Including, right? Not, <laughs> of course, you cannot forget to mention the locked down theming system that GTK4 apps have in place, which prevent them from live reloading. Yes, right? Cannot forget that. And that, okay, as I just mentioned, is the fatal flaw. Now, live theme reloading. You might not have heard of it before, but there is a distinction between GTK3 and GTK4 apps in terms of how well they respond to changes in themes. So watch what happens, as I just showed you with this theme switcher, which by the way, if you want to learn how to make something like this, you can go ahead and click the first link in the description. I teach you exactly how to make something like this so that you don't have to monkey see, monkey do, copy paste somebody else's dot files. Just pray to the gods of the dot files and rising. So so that so you don't have to troubleshoot your dot files instead of actually using them, right? So if you don't want to deal with all that, if you want a step-by-step -step process that teaches you how to do this, that is what you will find inside Hyper Accelerator. 10 hours of video content that teaches you exactly how to do this, specifically in the theme switches module, which is over two hours long. So if you want this, you can go ahead, click the first link and check it out. Now, back to what I was saying here. Because this is a GTK4 app and all GTK4 apps do not support live theme reloading, you're going to have to close and reopen the app. Now, it might not seem like that big of a deal, but when you're dealing with Nautilus, sometimes what happens is it lingers in the background, okay? It just doesn't like to die no matter how much you press your close window key on it. So you're going to have to kill all dash nine Nautilus in order to finally get rid of its soul, okay? And now if I attempt to launch the app, there you go. Finally, the theme has changed to reflect that of the current selected theme, which is going to be Everforest. Now, watch what happens if I switch to a theme like Nord, okay, particularly suited to this chilly weather that we have got going on. And of course, let's change the wallpaper to be something better. Maybe something like this heights one, okay? Make you really feel like you're at the edge of something. As you can see, it still doesn't update. So let's try and reload. And I still cannot tell if it's updated just because of the nature of the theme. Let's change it to Tokyo Night. And for this one, we're just going to have to kill it. Don't have a choice. Now, if I launch Nautilus, there you go. Finally changes the theme. So out of all of the file managers that I've tested, both GTK and QT ones, right? And cute ones. Yes, literally cute file managers. <laughs> Surprisingly, the cute file managers didn't come out on top and the GTK ones did especially this GTK4 one. But the only thing about it is it doesn't support live theme reloading. So if you've set something like this up yourself, which by the way, I teach you how to do again, as I just mentioned, right? If you want to set something like this yourself up, just know that Nautilus is not going to cut it, especially for th live theme reloading. However, if you can get around that and you don't mind killing Nautilus every single time or almost every time you want to end up launching it, right? If you don't mind that, then this has to be the best, okay? the best file manager that you can use on Hyperland, not just because it looks really good, but also it looks really good when you apply blur to it. So let me show you what I mean. Let's go to decorations, decoration.conf. Okay, in here, there should be an option that says 
Active opacity. So let's just turn that. Okay, there you go. Inactive opacity, inactive opacity. That's inside decoration. If I change the active opacity of a window to be 90% of its usual opacity, watch what happens when I open Nautilus. There you go. You see this fantastic blur effect being displayed behind it. Okay, it's a bit subtle, but I can decrease it to something like 80%. Okay, 0.8 is 80%, and there you go. The effect becomes much more noticeable. And with that, this actually looks pretty fantastic. Of course, the nature of active opacity is such that the text is also going to get blurred a little, and the opacity is going to decrease, but small price to pay to get a file manager looking this beautiful. And second thing I want to mention is a runner-up, because in case theme switching and live theme re reloading is very important to you, or you're looking to configure it, just like I have over here, right? It's going to get in the way when you want to switch themes and literally every single one of your apps is responding except one. So in order to avoid that, you might want to use a file manager like Thunar. So Thunar is built on GTK3, which means that as soon as you change your GTK theme using the script, of course, which is what's the backbone of this entire setup, right? As soon as you change the theme, hold on, let's open VS Codium for you to look at as well. Okay, now as soon as you change the theme, ta-da, let's say I choose something like e-ink. Okay, there you go. The entire thing updates. I can also do the same for something like Tokyo Night again. There you go. As you can see, the colors instantly update and you don't have to do any waiting before you see your new colors. And that is why Thunar is going to be a runner-up. So, Nautilus, number one, best file manager for Hyperline, and don't even get me started on cute file managers because, one, they are just tacky. They honestly look tacky compared to a GTK file manager. You know what? I don't even have Dolphin installed, and I hadn't planned this for the video, but in the spirit of keeping things on authentic and in the spirit of me proving a point, look, I will show you. God damn it. I will show you just what I mean. Oh, what? I will show you just what... I, oh my god. Let's update this. Yes, I will show you just what I mean by it looks tacky. Might be a personal opinion, but I do not care. It literally looks tacky. So, let's open Dolphin. And let me show you. There you go. Like, compare this. It doesn't look too bad, okay? But, <laughs> compare this to this. Especially look at the places thing. Like, come on. You have to have to agree that Nautilus just looks better. Of course, this is personal preference, and some people might actually prefer the cute file manager, it being cute and all, but I think I still prefer this one, and you might be too. You might be preferring this too, which, in that case, great. Go ahead, use Nautilus, and enjoy. If you want to learn how to make a custom theme switcher like this one on Hyperland so that you can use it to change themes on the fly, and not just that, but also change wallpapers on the fly so that whenever you get bored of one wallpaper, you can switch to another with this beautiful transition, not to mention turn Hyperland into a desktop environment with panels that look as sexy and slick as this, along with logout menus, lock screens, and OSDs for volume and brightness, and game modes and night modes and all the all the little fancy bells and whistles that come inside of a desktop environment. If you want that, if you want to learn how to make it, not just copy it from somebody else and call it your own, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program. As I just mentioned, it is a program which contains 10 hours of content that is better than any single video that you might have come across in the past. So if you want this, go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe, and I will see you next time. Stay rising. Mwah.